screen that is going on right now especially with this some of this media constant media coverage of the crisis especially now with the russian russian invasion of ukraine since two days ago but what we know certain for a fact is that like these two powerful countries are no saints and plus they are very guilty with their part it's basically a war there's no good side what i'm saying is that like you can talk about how the u.s is trying to militarize uh, countries and how they're supplying other countries with weapons to ignite another war on another country just like how you know the saudi-led yemen war that is still going on today and how the u.s has been supplying the saudi government to keep you know bombing yemen and cause a mass humanitarian crisis in the country and now it seems like there might be a new humanitarian crisis going on especially in eastern europe with ukraine but we know sooner for sure is that there are both sides to the aisle that's going on and plus there are factions that are you know fighting over you know the uh, sovereignty especially you know the ukrainian separatists in eastern europe who are obviously pro-russia so what we know for sure is that even though even though that people on the left majority of them have been silent on the russian invasion and they're calling it like a u.s propaganda or it's just a u.s invasion and there's a mass cover-up we also have some people on the left who are also condemning the russian military rolling in its convoy and tanks into the country and we can go around and talk about how the US start the US ignited the Yugoslav civil war the unnecessary invasion in Iraq and Afghanistan and the list goes on but what if I were to tell you that you know Putin himself he wants to be the new emperor of a whole new Russian empire and he's been very successful in doing this because, you know, Putin himself was a KGB spy and he was working in communications with the KGB. He was very good in spreading all misinformation, disinformation and active measures, which you can just Google it. I don't really need to, you know, I'm not going to get into the details, but what we know for sure is that like or what, what 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 i know is that you know even though that the the trump interference of election by russia in 2016 may have been true and some could have been exaggerated and the other side could have been bullshit and the others were nonsense but it's no denial of the fact that that the Russia may have interfered with the U.S. election, especially when, you know, Trump made that infamous speech there when he was making a joke when he said, Russia, I hope you find the 30,000 emails, the missing emails of Hillary, and you'll be re mightily be rewarded by the press. And then that's when that got serious. Okay, that's out of hand. There's a red flag there. I think it's worth an investigation of Trump's possible connection with Russia. And a lot of this, a lot of stories have been popping up and saying that, yeah, of course, Trump has very deep connections with the Russian oligarchs who are Putin's close buddies. And of, and of course, the story of Alexei Navalny, Navalny you know, broke off and how Putin tried to poison him and 
we all we know for sure is that you know there are, there were those that were duped by the pro putin media or pro putin disinformation that said that you know uh navalny was uh, corrupt he is you know very racist xenophobic and of course i was looking to stories that well navalny had apologized for his you know derogative comments and they're going all this you know smokescreen that Navalny is this right-wing, far-right, Nazi, racist. But even though that Navalny supported leftist candidates in the West, Navalny has supported Corbyn of UK, Sanders of the US. So how can you say he's very, very far-right if you know he's endorsed those candidates? And the only thing he did was... He exposed the corruption within the Russian oligarchs and especially oligarchs who run Russian state-run media. I saw some videos of him how they were like doing a lot of schemes of disinformation and I applaud him for that. I think that those that say that, you know, I think Navalny and Edward Snowden and Julian Assange should be in when the, within the same category, even though that they're both from different opposite sides of the aisle. But, you know, they're being used by these imperialist powers. And speaking about that, I think the fact that is that like, you know, well, even though that Ukraine, what's going on in Ukraine, especially that happened in 14, I'm talking about 2014. Well, it could have been true that, you know, there are a lot of Ukrainians are fascists, neo-Nazis. It doesn't excuse the fact that, you know, it doesn't excuse to justify the illegal Russian occupation of Ukraine, especially when Putin took over Crimea and we can go around and talk about like how the U.S. is trying to interfere with other countries and they want to impose their neoliberal free markets but it should not give the excuse to look at the other side in which Putin is trying to establish a new kind of Russian empire especially what's going on in Belarus or what happened in Belarus in 2020 when people in Belarus were protesting their president who had been there for more than 30 years. And of course, some people on the so-called left alternative media, they're fake left anyway, or they're so-called anti-imperialist media, but they're really, they're pro-Russian imperialists and they're going about like, oh, uh, the pro the freedom fighters were you know uh supported by the u.s corporations and the u.s fascists and their fascists i haven't looked into stories yet but what it could be true that you know there were some faction of fascists within the anti-government belarus movement but it shouldn't give the it shouldn't give Russia the green light to keep committing more crimes simply because the US and Western Europe does the same thing too. But I think that both Belarus and Ukraine should not be under the heels of both the US and Russia. And I will say specifically that these two countries should not be touched by these two powerful countries. And <clears throat> Belarus and Ukraine has had long enough with its years under Russia and later the Soviet Union. 
and then the Nazi occupation, and of course the Soviet Union again. And of course, the 10 years of being under US-backed neoliberal free market economy. I think that both Belarus and Ukraine should be on their right to self-determination and right of sovereignty. Especially with the the protests that happened in Kazakhstan with you know the oil price thing and Putin was calling it a counter-color revolution fully backed by corporations through the CIA. But it could have been true. It would have been true that some of the anti-government protests were instigated by fascists and instigated by multi-billion dollar corporations and of course the National Endowment for Democracy. But it shouldn't give the excuse for Russia to march in and roll its troops to suppress the protests. That's that's also Russia being another imperialist power. The same thing the same thing Putin accuses the US of. So I think that regardless if it's whether it's Ukraine, right wing or left wing, I think that they all have the right to defend themselves from any foreign invasion, Russia, NATO, you name it. <clears throat> but we cannot take Putin very lightly because, you know, Putin himself was a spy, as I said earlier, and you know, Putin knows how to spread a lot of misinformation, disinformation. In fact, even though the, I've read some tweets that Putin is fascist, you just don't know that maybe Putin is supporting fascist protests, fascist governments, like, you know, the story of Brexit with this Cambridge Analytica, and it was believed that the Russians were behind it and how they were meddling on other countries' elections, which it may be true, it may not be true, but even though that the U.S. has a long history of meddling in other countries' elections, it shouldn't give the excuse that Russia is a good guy just because the U.S. always does it. So, whether, if it's the U.S. or Russia, they both are, they both have their, you know, thing, and they're both corrupt, and they're both vying for a global domination. They are trying to imperialize other countries, and... It just happens that the U.S. has a lot of, of um, imperial imperialization, but it shouldn't give the green light that Russia is doing the same thing too. So, to the people of Ukraine, if you're watching this, fight the good fight. And the days of empires... Russia and Soviet Union are over, especially to the people of Belarus. Keep fighting the good fight. You will have the right to self-determination. Let us all pray for your countries, Ukraine and Belarus. And also to Kazakhstan that recently had a protest in January. And pray that you'll have the right to self-determination and keep fighting the good fight. Believe in hope. Have faith. Trust. In the Lord. But, you know, before I wrap this up, it's to say that, you know, and Putin 
is he's a very devious man and he has that the deceive deception with his smile and you know all the stories you hear that like you know Putin is really good in spreading a lot of you know division and hate and he's very good in targeting people citizens of countries who are very discontent with their government so if any time that you see any attacks on a country with mass protests or you know with any <clears throat> thing that you believe that it's bad because you believe it's good just take a look on who's writing the story or who are these alternative media that are making the stories that are on only the us and the western europe are bad but russia and other countries china are good because the truth with this i've read i've watched i've read news stories from these alternative media especially from the left and they have very good stories especially when they have when they cover geopolitics from third world countries but what i find astonishing is that they project putin like he's this you know saint or he's this good guy and any antagonism towards Putin, any any anything that's said about Putin, whether it's good or bad, is just anti-Russian or Russophobe propaganda, and which is not. Whether you might think Putin as good or bad, pro-Putin or anti-Putin, you cannot take him. You have to take him seriously because he's. He's almost like the devil who plays mind games with people, especially to those who are very discontent with their countries. You know, I, was, I fell for that too until I realized that, you know, even Republicans during the Trump presidency were kind of praising Trump and the Russia thing. And now that there's another precedent, it seems like Trump himself is still praising Putin for the un un unnecessary aggression. And even his Republican colleagues are cheering Russia as, you know, they're rolling their tanks. And of course, there are some people on the so-called left. I call them the fake left because... They're not really leftists. They're just pro Russia because Russia is just Russia is just another right wing country like the US. And you know, it's no doubt that Putin himself all across Europe has supported right wing fascist governments, as you know, even the mainstream and even alternative media has said. And <clears throat> of course, there were some leftists who still called Putin a fascist and the Ukrainian invasion was not necessary. And of course, some moderates within the liberals are condemning Putin for his invasion and his unnecessary aggression in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So, you, so you, you, you cannot take these people seriously. When I mean these people, I'm talking about Putin and these people who claim to be anti-imperialists, but really they're pro-Russian imperialists. They're supporting, you know, Russia as they imperialize other countries. And they say that all this, you know, segments of Russia being imperialist is just it's just US imperialist propaganda. But really, like as I'm saying here, you can I, I'm anti-imperialist, whether it's U.S. imperialism, Russia imperialism, or China imperialism. 
because all those three countries, they're all imperialist powers who are striving towards imperialism, especially China. China is also striving towards imperialism by its own, you know, uh, by, by its own terms. Like the U.S. imperializes countries, majority of it, it's militarily. Russia, almost the same thing too. And China, uh, well, Russia in terms of its, you know, disinformation story campaign of other countries. And of course, you got China who are just continuing to build, 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 build infrastructure in other countries. But those countries are in full debt. And China colonizes those countries. So you, you, you cannot take these imperialist countries seriously. So overall, just pray that there will be stability. And as I wrap up, I'll leave from here that anti-imperialism means you can be you can be all th against these three imperialist powers I just mentioned. But to keep taunting anti-imperialist a country and taunt pro-imperialism on another country, you're another you're 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 imperialist too. Like there are those people on the right who glorify US imperialism and mil and US intervention in other countries that deem as dictatorships. And there are those on the, the fake left who praise China, but really it's just another Chinese imperialism with infrastructure being as a cover. And Russia being that like, you know, anything the US is bad, China, Russia is good. That's basically what it is. So I'll see you in my next video.